Well, welcome, welcome. Today, I want to uh, play with a concept called your zone of acquisition, uh, sometimes called ZOA or ZOA. And really what that describes is the, the vertical space of your diaphragm here, um, kind of the, the point between the lowest ribs at the costal attachments and then the upper dome of the diaphragm. And we want to be creating as much of that vertical space as possible because that facilitates a wider, more expansive diaphragmatic breath. What happens um, in two very common spinal or rib cage misalignments is when one, which is more common among yogis or, or flexible people or dancers, is when the spine is in hyperextension and the ribs are kind of flared in external rotation. I'll come a little closer, not that my black tank top is gonna to show much, but the space here from my lowest rib to the dome of my diaphragm, and you can, yeah, you can feel it on yourself. We'll do some palpation in a minute too. When the ribs vault forward, there's less, this space becomes less vertical. And so when you inhale, the diaphragm isn't going to contract downward as much. The opposite problem, which is probably the more general population um, postural misalignment is, is flexion, a flexion pattern, you know, our, our productive culture. Um, opposite problem, but still the, the zoa is diminished and now it's really contracted inward. The ribs are retracted in towards the spine and now when we try to take a breath in, the diaphragm is kind of locked in its pre-contracted position and doesn't have any space to descend. So the optimal alignment of the torso with the pelvis really being this basin beneath the rib cage, you can think of like a, you know, we say it all the time, like being on your spit, this optimal alignment, you get that zone of apposition. So, in a lot of poses, um, we're cued to, to find a back bend. And, you know, rightfully so, I would say, again, the general population is spending most of their time like this. And with that diaphragm locked in the pre-contracted position, the lungs are short and forward. We're breathing upper chest. It's, it, the mechanics are um, really inefficient. Um, and when we breathe into the upper chest and upper lobes of the lungs, well, that's where the fight or flight receptors live, right? So it's a naturally quicker breath and we're activating those receptors that tell the brain that we're in a state of emergency versus breathing into the lower lobes of the lungs where the rest and digest receptors live, brain getting the signal through proper diaphragmatic expansion that we're safe, we're calm, we're okay, we can do all of the maintenance our body needs to do without feeling under attack. In several poses though, when we're cued to be in a back bend, Today we're gonna to really pay attention about where we're back bending from because if we're letting everything come forward from the ribs and flaring the ribs forward, well, we're losing that zone of opposition. So today we're gonna to work on back bending, but in a way that keeps the rib cage really aligned and neutral. And if there's any back bend at all, we're gonna work on it being more in the upper back so that the breathing is still supportive for the spine and um, we're not subconsciously keeping the breath up here, making the yoga practice the opposite of what it should be, um, alarming or stressful. Make sense? All that clear? Okay. Um, yeah, so if you have any questions about any of that, just unmute and ask um, or jot it down and you can, we can talk at the end. Hi, Wendy. Okay, let's start on our backs. Let's do a little bit of that diaphragm palpation. We're gonna get very familiar with those costal attachments today because again, zone of opposition starts at those costal attachments on the front lowest ribs and it's, it goes up to the dome, the peak of the diaphragm more deep into the body. So from a constructive rest, we can just start with our feet flat on the floor and the knees bent. Just place the hands above the navel and roll the head side to side letting the back body melt a little bit more into the mat, soles of the feet, sacrum, back of the skull, shoulder blades, 
finding a sense of grounding without a sense of heaviness. And then let the head come back to neutral so you're looking just straight up. Take your hands and press your thighs down. And notice when we do this, the natural tendency will be to stick the butt out, bring the pubic bone forward between the inner thighs, spread the collarbones. And this is a really nice counter action to all of that sitting. But as we're doing this and as we're opening the space of the first fold with the heels of the hands, what I want you to do here is just slightly retract the low ribs in. So back of the backs of the low ribs go toward the spine just a little bit. And you'll actually notice a, a greater hollowing of the belly. And then when you take a breath in, it should feel so voluminous versus when you just stick the pubic bone out, keep the ribs flaring forward. That should feel like more of a breath just in the front of the body. But when you tuck those low ribs in just a little bit to maintain that zone of opposition, the breath should feel 360 degrees around. And then release the hands from the thighs, crawl them up to the low ribs, um, and then actually find the bottom of the breastbone, the xiphoid process, and then keep scrolling down the breastbone until you feel the two ribs branch off from one another from the middle of the rib cage. And just two inches left and right at the bottom of the breastbone, adding a little bit of pressure just to start to feel that um, the, the skeleton of your body, the lowest rib and how you can sort of dig the fingers up and underneath. And you can go all the way out wide towards the distal point of the lowest ribs. And then back in, you'll, you'll, you'll find that edge point where the floating ribs kind of start in the back and you can't go any further. And just, just gently um, prodding up um, left and right along the two lowest ribs. Just getting a sense again, costal attachments of the diaphragm. And if you have, uh, if you have um, long nails for some reason, this is, um, this is where you're gonna stay because when I invite you to kind of dig up and under a little bit more, the, the nails, it, it hurts. Um, so if you have long nails, just keep going with this prodding. Otherwise, bring your hands to um, a more proximal place along the lowest rib, so closer to the midline, about two inches left and right of that xiphoid process, the bottom of the breastbone. And then as you take a breath in, feel the kind of the tough steak, the meat of the diaphragm expand into your fingers. And then on just a passive exhale, easy exhale, letting the fingers dig up and under that rib cage a little bit. Some of you um, have been doing this for a while and might be able to get up and underneath the ribs and kind of feeling the back of the low ribs. That's fantastic. If there's any sharp or um, intense pain back off. There should, it should be max two out of 10 pain. So every breath in, you're kind of releasing the fingers a little bit. And every breath out, you're just giving yourself a little bit of a deeper tissue massage there. You can move it around a little bit, kind of swirling the fingers. Think about you know the diaphragm being your largest and most important muscle of respiration. And just like any other muscle, it, it needs a massage. It needs to be pliant. It needs to have a degree of flexibility in order to fully um, ex contract and expand. Otherwise, the, the rib cage becomes this compressive structure that, that squeezes the heart, squeezes the lungs instead of working like, like levers and pulleys to have optimal breathing. And then once that place feels prodded enough, uh, you'll move a little bit left and right. So we're just working our way more distally. Breathing in and out, digging the fingers up and underneath. And gently at first, just feeling maybe your limit. You know, the, the diaphragm should kind of feel like a, like a tough steak. <laughs> it's a muscle, right? It's, um, it's, it's not a skin, it's not a, a fat structure, it's, it's a muscle. It's a little bit of a tougher feeling. But we want to massage that a little bit so it becomes a little bit more pliant and then getting your fingers up and underneath the ribs eventually is like getting that deep tissue massage. Uh, imagine if your diaphragm had like trigger points like your rhomboids, like this would be the same kind of idea. And every exhale, just gently digging a little bit deeper, maybe swirling the fingers around, just a little self massage and then moving out a little bit further left and right. This is a fantastic thing to do daily. <laughs> um, it, it really, really will help with the expressiveness of the, of the muscle of the diaphragm. 
it gets really tight and locked up the more we sit. It gets locked in that pre-contracted position and this helps sort of free it. It's like if you've been typing on a computer all day or running a lot and your shoulders get tight and somebody is kind enough to give you a massage, it's like the same kind of relief. And then work your way out to as far out left and right as you can go before reaching that point of those floating ribs. This is for a lot of people the point where they can get the fingers up and underneath the most. Maybe two more breaths here. Letting the breath just be free and easy, not having to clench or hold or do any kind of breathing exercise here. And then letting that go, taking your feet wide and just windshield wiping the knees back and forth so you're kind of stretching a little bit left and right, the diaphragm. Letting the breath just be easy and, and natural here. Uh, especially that exhale, you know, the, the lungs are elastic. They have a natural elastic recoil. Letting the breath just be easy out. Good. Okay. And then <laughs> heel toe your feet back together. Roll onto your side. Press yourself up and let's come right onto the belly. So if that was for the pliancy and the flexibility of the diaphragm, let's work a little bit on just activating the muscle itself. So here from a sphinx pose, you can lift your right leg up and back and your left leg up and back just to make some more space at the sacrum. And then you can fan your elbows wide, stack the hands and press your, or rather let your head drop, the forehead drop onto the stacked hands. You might drag the skin of the forehead a little bit down so that you're not caught in an expression of surprise subconsciously. Okay, so now with the, the front kind of really the whole zone of opposite apposition being making contact with the mat here in a way, we're going to feel the expansion, the contraction of the diaphragm. So as you take a breath in through the nose, tongue to the roof of the mouth, hold it at the top. Should feel like you just did a little bit of a push up, like your diaphragm just did a push up and then easy release. Do that several times, inhaling very slowly. So it's like you're, you're just teasing that diaphragm into a push-up and then holding full at the top, maybe for a count of five to 10 seconds. Contracting, 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 holding it in that contracted position and then letting it go. Do about five more of those. It's a very subtle and small exercise but the slower you breathe in and the longer you hold the breath at the top, the more you're activating that muscle. So starting to warm it up, like this is a warm up for your diaphragm. You should even feel the backs of the ribs kind of getting rounder and inflating a little bit too as you hold that breath. And letting it go. When you hold the breath at the top, try not to clench anything in the face or the neck. Pacify the chest. Just holding that downward contraction. It's about five to ten seconds depending on your tolerance. And then letting it go. Probably one or two more depending on how quickly you're moving through this. If we were to do this for another five minutes, your diaphragm would start to get fatigued, just like any other muscle. It would start to get a little bit hungry for oxygen. Last one. Let it be your slowest and long, slowest breath in and longest hold yet. Holding, holding, holding. Separating the teeth, letting the whole face be soft. Feeling that tension rise in the space of the diaphragm and only when you're ready to exhale do you let it go. Nice. All right. Forehead directly on the mat. Slide your hands next to your lowest ribs. Tuck the elbows in. Tuck your toes. Just press yourself up into a table and then walk your knees in and let's find a seat or to open up the accessory muscles of respiration before we start weight bearing in any pose. 
So we worked on the pliancy of the diaphragm, worked on activating it as a muscle. It is a muscle. Um, so we want, always want to take care of the diaphragm first. All right. So sitting well, again, in the beginning I was talking about the um, habits, the samskaras, right? Like the grooves in our mind, our neural pathways of flexing the ribs or maybe um, flexing the, or extending the spine or flexing the spine as a habit. So think about a really neutral torso here, the basin of the pelvis really supporting the structure of the, the rib cage. And then with that, it should also feel like when you get that, it's like kind of like the, the pelvis and the low ribs just come slightly, just slightly more together. The, the belly will turn on, start to roll the shoulders up and back and down. Make sure you have a good plug of your feet, You're sitting on the precipice of your block and the, and the buttock bones are, are behind you. Just noticing what the uh, shoulders are feeling like today. If maybe they're crunchy, maybe they're feeling a little bit watery. Change of seasons here really will show up in the joints. Yeah. Good. So we're working in the muscles of the chest, upper back and neck now, these accessory breathing muscles, it's reverse direction. They are um, really there for the purpose of what we're doing now, articulating the arms, shoulders, head and neck. They're, they're really having poor leverage on the rib cage because the, in, in the origin of the muscle is proximal, the insertion is distal, which allows for this nice movement. And, but to use them as breathing muscles, that has to switch. The stabilizers have to be on the outer, more distal parts, and the, the movers have to be closer to lift the rib cage. So they should really only be engaged during high levels of work when you really have to breathe quickly. All right, let that relax down. Take the arms out left and right, flip the palms up so you're getting a really nice external rotation. And notice that the low ribs aren't flaring. Tuck the bottom ribs in toward one another. We're really working on that zone of apposition today in every single pose. Good, and then turn them back, turn them up, turn them back, turn them up. And as you're doing this, you can really feel for that activation of that 360 degree breath. And can you feel the breath in the back ribs? Yeah, good. And then start to bring the palms up as you do this and then end with them facing one another. Take a hold of opposite hand to opposite elbow. So now you have more leverage to lift the elbows up into the palms. Let the sides of the neck feel long and really spin those armpits toward the heart so you get a good external rotation. But again, without just coming into this habitual yoga back bend. Good. And then a few times, bring it up, bring it down. Especially when you go forward, try not to just let those ribs go, right? Think about keeping actually a neutral torso. Any back bend at all would be much higher up. So think about really just this as a shoulder movement right now more than a full torso situation. Good. When you're at the bottom, just switch the grip and do a few in the opposite direction, or rather the opposite grip and moving in the same direction. And you don't have to over force it. Like all, oftentimes like going too much is what will bring those low ribs forward. So just biceps in line with the ears. It doesn't have to be more than that. Yeah. And then the next time you're up here, stay up here. Plug in the left side of your seat. Give yourself a little tick-tock over to the right. Thinking about just opening up very, very subtly the left side of the rib cage. You might drop your head into the bottom right arm. You could also look up if that has no crane on the neck. Think about expanding just the tissue of the left lung. Again, breathing deep into the body so you're activating those, those rest and digest receptors, the calming receptors in the lower lobes of the lungs, also where gas is exchanged, so it's a real um, efficient breath. Good. And then come back to center. Bring the arms down. Just take a moment to take a breath symmetrically here, but maybe not feeling so symmetrically. And then sweep the arms up, switch the grip, do it the other way. Plug in the right side of your seat, just a little tip over to the left. It doesn't have to be like the furthest you can go over, just a, a bit of extension here on the right lateral sheath of the body. Think about sending the right buttock bone and the right elbow in two opposite directions, plugging in and lifting off. 
Things look really nice. And, and there's sort of like a soft power in not overdoing things and not overstretching. There's so much more to be noticed when you don't go your full throttle. There's a lot of sensation kind of on the way to the full opening. Finding a breath deep into the right lung. And then back to center, let the arms come down again. Finding again that gentle retraction of the ribs in. Now also again, activate that belly. Bring the arms out to the side, turn the palms forward, make a cactus. Now this will be a real challenge to not flare the ribs as you bring the elbows back. So it's just opening the chest, right? Not dumping into the ribs. So when you take a breath in here, it shouldn't be just a sensation in the front body. But as you exhale, you can round forward. And as we round and, and, and flex the spine here, we recruit the belly to let that breath come out and up. And just go back and forth, not overdoing it. In and out. If you want to layer that ocean sounding breath, that ujjayi breath here, this is a nice place to do it. As we are sort of still warming up these accessory breathing muscles, the ujjayi breath is a warming pranayama. That gentle constriction in the back of the throat also helps to slow the breath down. Do two more in each direction. Tongue is on the roof of the mouth, so you always have that point of connection. And then the next time you're open here and just neutral, let the elbows extend, let the palms turn up one more time. Flip the pinky fingers up and back so you're also spinning the armpits open. Just take a moment to close the eyes here, gaining a sense of north and south from perineum to crown of the head, and then from each ring finger reaching out east to west, and then taking a breath feeling like it can be very, very spherical. And on your exhale, just dropping the arms and rolling the shoulders up and back and down. Good, so we took care of these accessory breathing muscles. Let's just activate the core a little bit, and then we'll get into some asana. And we'll be really, really, really primed in our container for really good breathing biomechanics. So one more time coming onto the back body. Have a block, have a block. Lay all the way down, um, but have the knees bent and you can take this block right between the thighs. And hugging the block between the thighs, um, really turning on these adductor muscles of the legs. It should feel like as you hug the block and find the balls of the feet here and let the head be just a little bit heavy, tucking the chin slightly, there's a, there's a gathering in towards the center. There's a sense of the deeper core here just by hugging the block. That belly kind of hollows in toward a very, very central part of you. So take first one hand to the chest and one hand just um, above the navel. And this top hand that's on the chest, I want you to use it as a pacifying force for the chest. So just thinking that the chest is very, very calm. Squeeze in the block, take a full breath in. And as you exhale, I want you to squeeze the block more and feel like you're exhaling from the pubic bone up to the lowest ribs. It's kind of like you're zipping up a pair of jeans and then inhaling fully. And then squeezing the block as you exhale, pubic bone to low ribs. So even just using this breath as a way to activate the core. Three more, full breath in. Squeeze the block, zip up the core to exhale from pubic bone to low ribs. Or maybe pubic bone to that xiphoid process, so it's a, a midline we're following. Two more. Don't get lazy with that block, especially on the exhale. Squeeze it, squeeze it, squeeze it. Such a deep sense of core, even though we're just breathing, the core is so turned on. You can really feel how the abdominal corset are muscles of expiration. Last one, zipping up, zipping up, zipping up. All the way empty. And then letting that go. Okay. Now remove the block, but bring the legs into a tabletop position. So the sacrum is, is flush with the ground and the 
knees are at a right angle and the ankles are at a nice right angle without, without overextending the toes towards the shins. All right, now <laughs> take your fingertips at either side of your ears, sides of your temples or head. Take a full breath in. On your exhale, using the belly, lift the shoulders and head off the mat. Good. Now stay here and extend the arms, press them into the knees, into the tops of the very bottom of the femurs. Hold here, take a breath in, let it be full in the back body. As you exhale, purse the lips, breathe out between the teeth as you curl up just one more time. Press the hands into the thighs. And then lower down, let the head meet the mat. You can hug the knees in for a second. Little break, one breath here. Should feel like that was such a small, subtle movement, but holy cow, it turned on the core. All right, and then back to that tabletop, reset. Hands at the sides of the head very gently. Take a full breath in. On your exhale, through the nose, just lift up the head, neck, and shoulders with the activation of the belly. And then press your hands into your thighs as you breathe in, feel the side ribs flare. Purse lips, exhale, press the hands into the thighs even more, lift up. One more time, stay up, breath in, flare the side ribs. Purse lips, exhale. And then lower down slowly, hug the knees. Looks like nothing, feels like a lot. Feels like a lot. Okay, last thing, legs in tabletop. Hands at the head, just lightly, take a full breath in. This time when you come up, pursed lips, exhale. This time extend the hands toward the outer ankles, take a breath in. As you exhale, curl up even more, pursed lips, exhale. Hold it, hold it, hold empty. Three, two, one, inhale, roll back down, hug the knees. Okay, my core is turned on. My, my abdominal core sits alive. All right, just circle the knees so you kind of circle the sacrum here. Just give a little massage left and right two times. Yeah, good. And then rock and roll yourself up to a seat. Plant your hands. Right away, let's step, step back to a plank pose. Right away. All right. Should feel like the belly is on and the body is now pretty warm. So wrists are right under the shoulders. Hands are that shoulder width distance. Heels over the balls of the feet. Now, I want you to think about just gently, very, very gently, a micro bend of the knees just a little bit in order for you to bring the bottoms of the ribs closer to the front of the pelvis. So it's the, the tiniest, tiniest, tiniest amount of what will feel like spinal flexion, but really we're just increasing that zone of opposition. Now take a breath in as you press the ground away, feel the side ribs flare. And as you exhale, like you're zipping up pubic bone to xiphoid process. Two more. Looking down between the hands, last one. Whoa. And then hips up and back, down dog. It should feel so nice to open the front of the body, pedal out the feet, open up the calves and the backs of the legs. Should feel it. That is the bottom of the breastbone. Yeah, it's the place just before the two low ribs split up. All right, and then once you're done with your pedaling, you can swish the hips a little side to side, opening those side ribs, chest stays squared towards the mat as the heels and the butt swivels left and right. You should feel a spontaneous, very natural inhalation here. And then back to the center, Lift the heels, bend the knees, find the inner edges of the hands to emphasize all four corners, which tends to be the inner edges that fray, and then 
spinning the armpits toward the heart as the inner edges plug in, press the ground away to send the outer hips up and back. So even here, even in a down dog, I want you to think about the low ribs just retracting in just slightly. It should actually have the effect of hollowing the low belly and perhaps giving you that spontaneous Uddiyana Bandha. And then from there, again, breath into the side ribs. Gentle exhale, just let it go. Plugging in your left foot, look forward between the palms. Step the right foot forward to a lunge, hopefully with all that core activation, nice and quiet. Your right knee throws forward into the right armpit as you lift the back leg, move your butt to the left. And then from the plug of the back foot, lowering the back knee down really slowly. So it's just that straight line and you're still plugged in more into the foot than the knee. All right, hands to the hips, give yourself a squeeze side to side so you can really feel the east and west of the outer hips. And then keeping the lower body exactly where it is, just hinging up, kind of like in, a, in an action figure, like this is the plastic joint, that circle, and then you just hinge up. Nice, okay. Now, front knee moves forward, pubic bone moves forward, but don't let it be the rib cage that's following it. So the pubic bone in the pelvis moves forward, right inner knee moves forward. I want you to think about shoulders over hips though here to start. So we're not in, just in a back bend. We're really having a neutral torso. Make sure that left butt stays on its own side and the right side of the waist can float back so there's no dumping in that right hip. Good, now reach the arms up. Palms face each other to start. Mm -hmm. First lift the thumb side of the hand so it'll feel like the back body becomes a little bit more broad. It'll feel like a very gentle expression of that spinal flexion pattern, allowing you to take a breath into the back body just underneath the shoulder blades. Letting that go. Tongue is on the roof of the mouth. Then prioritize the pinky fingers lifting. Without taking the ribs with you, lifting the chest. Lifting the front of the chest up. Good. And then lifting through the middle fingers, which should give you the sides of the ribs. Good. And then just staying like this for a few breaths, plugging into the back foot, keep moving the pubic bone forward, but don't let the angle of the pubic bone and the rib cage change so that the rib cage is dumping out. Think about the pelvis, again, even though in this, it's an asymmetrical position, it's a, it's a support that's that foundation for the rib cage. Good. Now, if we want to add a back bend here, yet keeping this beautiful expression of the diaphragm contracting in that proper zone of apposition, think about a beach ball between the shoulder blades and just very gently, like not doing the most you could, just leaning up and back from that point. So that as you breathe in, you can still feel the expansion of the back body as if your thumbs were lifted. And if you can't feel it, lift the thumbs a little bit more. Yeah, so nice. These look beautiful, everybody's. All right, and then think about not flaring the ribs. Make two fists, actually contract the low ribs in and deliver the torso down so it's not in a huge back bend. You're keeping, keeping, keeping that neutral spine and then throw the knee forward a little bit more. Now that the torso is supported on the thigh, the front body can move a little bit more forward. You can feel that opening of the right collarbone. Good, okay. Lift the back leg, hands under the shoulders, step it back, plank pose. Get your measure, press the ground away, kind of vaulting the, the torso off of the ground plugging in the feet, the tiniest little softening of the knees so that the as is bones and the bottom two ribs can move toward one another like a millimeter or two. It's very subtle. So that as you press the ground away to take a breath in, feeling the side ribs and maybe the back of the ribs flare, maintaining that zone of apposition, exhale, feel the belly come online and from this non-hyperextension, the abs will really, 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 really help that exhalation. Good, and then up and back, downward facing dog. 
So we're not doing a whole lot of fancy movement today, but we're really refining the feeling of the torso and the shape change that breathing provides in a functional breath. From the right foot as your anchor, step the left foot forward. Use the exhalation to use the belly to get that left foot forward. Yeah, exactly. All right, throw the left knee forward into the armpit from the plug of the back foot so there's more space created in the spine, more opening in the front of that right leg. Move your butt a little bit to the right, and then from the plug of the back foot, lower the right knee down in a straight line. Yeah, it should feel like a really nice opening for those right hip flexors, which get so tight from all the sitting we do. So tight hip flexors, tight, tight quads, also a sign that the diaphragm is tight. Hands to the hips, like give yourself a squeeze in towards the midline. You'll feel like that kind of sucking up sensation. And then just like it's a big plastic joint, like in a action figure, just hinging up, your hands will rotate with you. Yeah. Find the pinky toe side of the right foot. Send the left knee forward. Now, as you're moving the pose forward, don't let the ribs come with you. You can even take your two um, first two fingers of each hand and just gently push them in and back. Like just a little subtle reminder. Yeah. And then bring the arms up. Let's find that three um, expressions of the hands again. So first thumb side of the hand, which will kind of shorten the front of the chest. It might drop the vision a little bit. That's okay for right now. Think about the breath in the back body, in the shell. And then from there, nothing's gonna change in the ribs. Just lift the pinky side up. It'll lift the vision in the front of the chest a little bit. So there's, you know, the emotion of the pose is more uplifting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then middle fingers to get the sides of the ribs. Yeah, Wendy, even more. Think about the two bottom ribs contracting in. It's so counterintuitive to the back bend we normally cue. Think about the rib cage being right over the pelvis. Yeah, that's it. And so just take a few breaths here, really feeling like as if there was a strap around the level of the, the lowest ribs that you could feel it in all directions expanding outward on the inhalation. It should feel like you've never taken a deeper breath in a lunge. And then if you're gonna add a back bend, it's just a gentle draping of the upper back so that there's really not a whole lot of flaring of the ribs. It can be so, 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 so subtle. Because really, if we wanted to do a full back bend and bring the ribs more forward, really the best thing to do would be to hold our breath so that the container stays puffed up to protect the spine. But here we're breathing, so we don't want to flare them too far forward. And then making your two fists, think about, again, low ribs to as-is bones, just coming together a little bit more. So as you hinge forward, you can really feel the belly, 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 armpit to knee. And then throwing the knee forward into the armpit, just one more time, opening up the right front of the hip, right hip flexors, and then lifting the back leg. So vision is now down. And then hands plant under the shoulders. Right side is already formidable in a plank pose. So really just using the belly to lift the left heel to the left buttock bone and then stepping it back. Yeah. And then again, very soft, um, very subtle, bending of the knees, very, very subtle. Same thing, very, very subtle pulling of the low ribs towards the as-is bone. So the breath in is voluminous and the breath out, you can really feel the belly. One more of those. Good, and then up and back dog pose. So we're building heat, not moving a whole lot, but still building that heat. Feel how nice and open the down dog feels now. Pressing the ground away through all four corners of the palms, spinning the armpits toward the heart, not letting the back bend take control here in this dog pose. Feeling for that real strap-like feeling around the low ribs. And then looking forward, shifting forward, bending the knees down, pointing the toes, child's pose. Yeah. Forehead to the mat, hands just face up. Next to the feet, roll the forehead side to side. If you need a block underneath your head, that's fine. Just have it on a surface. 
So from the completely um, released feeling of the forehead into that surface mat or block, you're letting the back of the neck take a little bit of a break here. Here with the contact of the belly to the inner thighs and the exposure of the back body up towards the ceiling, it should feel like the breath balloons into the entire shell of the back from the, from the place between the shoulder blades to the tail end of your spine. Take one more breath here. Make it so easy. The diaphragm accessory breathing muscles have been primed to let breathing be easy. And then after that easy exhale, sweep the arms forward so you're really reaching as far forward as possible, really opening the space underneath the armpits. So now the breath might feel a little bit wider side to side. Plug in the tops of the feet, shift forward, elbows down, butt lifts. And then here, be very careful. The tendency will be to let the low ribs just sink down. Hug them in. Hug them in. And then from there, taking a breath in so it's nice and wide, hold the breath as you place the chest between the hands, bending the elbows in towards the midline, and then pressing up, exhaling into your high cobra here. Yeah, wrists under shoulders. So now we are in a back bend. So it's going to be very, very um, hard to find a zone of opposition in a true back bend. So what I want you to do is just lift the thighs off the mat a little bit so that you can retract the ribs in and you're putting weight in the arms. Take a breath in and then hold the breath and find the cobra again. Hold the breath, tuck the toes, and then on your exhale, down dog. So in a back bend, it's very helpful to actually hold the breath at the top of the inhalation because all of that puffing up, that intra-abdominal pressure, will help protect the spine. It won't help you back bend as far, but for some people, that's a good thing. All right. And then take little steps, feet towards the hands coming to the front of the mat to find yourself in a forward fold. So similar to that um, child's pose, a lot of the emphasis of the breath might be felt in the back body here. Bend your knees generously. Give yourself a measure of two fists between the arches. Bend your knees so much that they go into the armpits like they did in the lunge. And then scoop up your hands, scoop up your heels with your hands so that you're giving yourself a little lift, shifting towards the balls of the feet, letting the head completely drop and dangle. And then with the grip of the hands to the heels, let it be um, light and not clenchy. So it's just a, a natural fit, not something you have to really fight for. Give the head a clockwise direction drizzle down towards the floor and then do it counterclockwise. Again, just releasing the sides of the neck, these scalenes, SCM muscles. They're really accessory breathing muscles that don't need to be turned on that much. And then let the head just be passive. Remove the hands from underneath the feet. Bring your hands again to your hips, squeezing them together like we did in the lunge, but now the legs are symmetrical. As you start to bring your nose forward, chin forward, bending the knees forward just slightly, I want you to think about not completely back bending as you come up. So normally we say back bend your way up. Think about hinging up still, but not completely giving it away in the ribs so that when you come here halfway, just let the arms dangle for a second. So you can see my ribs aren't dumping down. I'm really tucking them up and in. And then press the hands into the shins and the shins into the hands. Take a breath here. It's the same kind of effect that we did in that core work to begin. You'll find a really puffed up breath flaring like gills of the fish in the ribs. And as you exhale, you should feel that belly contract and contract and contract in. Okay, now you can keep your arms out to the side or you can keep them in front of you. In front of you will be the harder version. If they're out to the side, just keep them level with the shoulders. Start to drop your butt and bend your knees forward, coming into Utkatasana chair pose, and then maybe sweeping the arms forward if they were out, just to shoulder height. In an Utkatasana, again, the tendency will be to throw the low ribs forward. No, tuck them in, activate the belly, let the tail lengthen. Be even weight from the balls of the feet to the heels. 
So now the container is so formidable. You can stick your butt out a little bit to lift the chest, but without flaring the ribs. It should feel so compact, so internal. And then on your next exhale, press the ground away, fingers point towards the ground, standing up. Yeah. Take a moment to let that flush downward. Give the body a little shake out. Yeah. And then just stand. Like, don't try to do anything. Just stand in a way you would be standing in your house, in the supermarket, waiting in line. Close the eyes if it's comfortable so you can really drop into the sensation of not manipulating your stance in any way. Noticing where the weight in the legs is. Like, do you tend to pronate in the feet or supinate the feet? Is the weight in the inner edges or the outer edges? Do the knees knock in? Do they bow out? And as you move up, I want you to start to pay really close attention to the orientation of the pelvis. In your neutral, habitual stance here, are you more of a gentle hyperextender? Is the butt sticking out a little bit? Is the pubic bone moving forward? Or are you more of a, a rounder, a flexor? There's neither one is good nor bad. It's just, you know, we live a life and we have habits. So just closing your eyes, breathing into the feeling of what is habitual for you. What is your normal stance? For me, I'm a hyperextender. My ribs flare out, my butt sticks back. That would be, this would feel normal for me. For you, it might be the, it might be the opposite. So just feeling the, where the weight is naturally distributed when you stand. And not judging it, just, just really getting a sense of where that actually is. Where is the pelvis, the basin of the pelvis in relation to the rib cage? And then when you're ready, opening the eyes, let's clean this up a little bit. Feet are at a hips width distance. You can do our little check, heel to toe, toe to heel. Spreading through the balls of the feet, spreading the webbing of the feet so that this, the foot, the, the natural place we have a connection to the earth is really plugged in. Think about rising up to the arch of the foot to the perineum so that there's a sense of lifting and grounding at the same time. Now, think about just very gently relaxing the tail down. So we're not tucking the tail, we're not squeezing the butt, we're not extending the hips forward, just like a melting down of the sacrum so it's easy. The two as is bones face forward like headlights. Bring your two first fingers to your low ribs and just gently move them back, like maybe a millimeter or two. It's, it's very subtle so that now the basin of the pelvis, the pelvic girdle, is directly under the rib cage. You can roll the shoulders up and back and down to face the palms forward because anatomical neutral is actually a little bit of external rotation here. And, and in anatomical neutral, the height of the collarbone is the height of the top of the shoulder blade. But don't let the opening of the chest flare the ribs forward. Keep that gentle, gentle pulling back of the ribs towards the spine. Let the crown of the head really lift and then close your eyes again. It should feel different than your habitual stance. And as you start to notice your breath, maybe you can notice the breath in a place that it wasn't quite accessing before as you would stand normally. That zone of opposition really in its fullest extent, the place from the bottom tips of the ribs to the top dome of the, di dome of the diaphragm in the front of the rib cage is aligned so that the diaphragm can make its full descent. Its full descent, which again activates those rest and digest receptors in the lower lobes of the lungs. So we wanna keep the essence of this feeling as we go through a little bit of a flow. So every pose, we're not going into our habit, whether it's the rounding, whether it's the flexing, we wanna stay in this beautiful neutral spine that allows for the best breathing possible, okay? So from the front of your mat, let's hinge down again. So hinging forward, we might just come through chair pose. Again, gently tucking the lower ribs in, bringing the arms forward so we get this sense that as we're gonna be moving through this pose, not in a static way, but as a transition. This is really what we wanna feel, the belly lifting in and back, weight evenly in the feet, 
and a real opening side to side of the ribs as we breathe. And, and then just start to punch your fists forward or out, depending on what will be easier for you as the buttock bones move back. But again, not letting the ribs drop. Think about widening the sacrum and tucking the low ribs in. So it's a true right angle. And then folding yourself in half, bend your knees as much as you possibly need to drop the head. Beautiful. And then bring your hands right in front of your feet. Step it back to a plank pose. Nail that plank pose. Think about just finding the feet a lot, but gently softening the knees so that the, the belly isn't flopping down towards the mat. Good. And then slowly lowering the knees down, pointing the toes, shifting back to the child's pose. Starting here. Let the palms face up near the feet. Take a breath in just for you. You'll feel it really ballooning the back body nice and slowly, letting it go passively. And then one is a rise, nose forward, chin forward. So as you come up in a quote unquote back bend, keep the low ribs tucked in. You'll feel the core supporting the spine as you reach the arms up. No back bend here, just bring the hands to touch. Lift up, lift up, lift up. Good, and then as you exhale, arms out to the side, tuck the low ribs in, tuck them in. Bring the hands to the front of the mat, head drops. Elbows down, butt lifts. Don't let the belly flop as you slither forward to your high cobra. Maybe keep the inhale at the top so that you can keep that, that intra-abdominal pressure and then tucking the toes up and back down, dog. That's your exhale without overdoing the back bend. Without overdoing the back bend. All right, right foot forward. That's your step forward to a lunge. Left knee down, hinge it up. Think about the relationship of the pelvis to the rib cage as you sweep the arms up, evenly expressing all fingers up. Yes. And then folding yourself down without flopping the belly. Lifting the back knee, preparing to launch forward, forward fold. Feet are hips with distance, just hang, bend the knees. You're not overusing the back. Okay, now here's the real kicker. As we hinge up, let's come through chair pose, sweep the arms forward. Belly not flaring, tail really lengthening, and then reaching up, and then reaching up. Think about as the arms are extended here, neutral torso. Take a breath here just to pause to really find that. Maybe you need an extra little tucking of the low ribs. Good, and then hands out to the side as we hinge, we hinge. So you're going right through chair pose, hinging down not flaring the ribs, dropping the head. So good. And then that halfway lift, hands to the shins, plug it in, lift the belly in and up. Good. And then step, you gotta use your core here to step the right foot back, right knee down, right angle at the left leg, arms sweep up. Think about the relationship again, pelvis to rib cage. Lift up through all the fingers, find the back foot, and then hinge down, on that exhale, wrists under shoulders, left foot steps back, nail the plank pose. Find the belly as you exhale. We'll take an extra breath here. And then on your next exhale, down dog. Lifting the buttock bones up and back, finding the full 360 breath. As you inhale forward and through, you can stay in the plank, or maybe you hold that breath at the top, tuck toed up dog, wrists under the shoulders. Lift the crown of the head, find the feet, lift the thighs, and then knees down, point the toes, hug the belly in as you come back. Child's pose, hands come, palms up next to the feet. Let the forehead just rest. Take an extra breath here just for you. And then one is a rise, hug the belly in, no hyperextending of the spine. Such a different consciousness to be in this flow. Reaching up. Arms out to the side, hug the belly in as you hinge down. Palms forward, head down. And on your inhale, butt lifts, but the belly doesn't drop. Hug it in as you slither through. Maybe hold that breath at the top for your high cobra. Tuck the toes, lift the thighs, down dog. Don't give the belly away. If you tuck the low ribs in, you might feel that belly hollow, which is such a nice feeling. Right foot plugs in. Left foot steps forward, hopefully without a sound eventually. Have that right angle at the front leg, 
back knee drops really, really quietly. Come forward to come up. Pelvis supporting the rib cage, lifting up through all sides of the hands. And then hinging forward, hug the belly in. Armpit to the knee, lift the back leg. Use your belly to lift off and step forward to a forward fold. Drop the head. Knees forward, tail lengthens, chair pose, hug the belly in. Neutral, 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 and then press through the feet, reach up. Let's take an extra couple breaths here. Same kind of action of the fingers as in that low lunge so that we can lift through all sides of the ribs up to find that neutral, neutral expression. And then when you're ready to exhale, bending the knees, sending the butt back, arms out to the side, not flaring the ribs. It's such a clean hinge to fold forward. Let the head drop. Next inhale, it's a halfway lift. Hands to shins, shins to hands. Step that left foot back, left knee down. Arms sweep up, neutral, neutral, neutral. If you do a back bend, it's just in the upper back, so the pelvis is still supporting you. And then hinging down, hugging the belly in, armpit to the knee, lift the back leg, plank pose, nail it. Feels so strong, like you're really pressing the ground away as you take a breath in, flare the ribs out side to side. And then exhale up and back, dog pose. Feel that nice lift of the belly with the neutral torso. And then as you inhale, maybe hold the breath after the plank pose, coming through to up dog. Stay in the feet, keep the legs lifted. And then on your exhale, knees drop, but hug the belly in, point the toes. Child's pose, hands back to the feet. Let the head just drop. Roll it a little side to side, maybe shift the hips a little side to side. So those are poses you do a lot. But when the focus is different, they can be demanding in another way or they can be interesting in a way that maybe they aren't normally. When you're ready, hinging up from that hugging in of the belly so it's not a flare. And then as you kind of are kneeling now, but it's still Tadasana, the rib cage still supported by the pelvis. Sides of the waist are long. Nice. Okay, grab a block, sit on it. Let's end with just a little bit of a tactile awareness here. Take your strap. So I've been talking about um, that, that imaginary feeling of the strap at the low ribs. Well, let's actually feel that. So you can take the strap at the level of the lowest ribs. Snug so that it doesn't fall down, but not too tight to where you feel um, too constricted or, or suffocated. Sitting well. So again, not dumping, not flexing. Neutral, 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 but really giving you that sense that there's no blockage along the spit, along the Tai Chi, along the plumb line. You can place the hands face down or face up on the lap, whatever feels better for you. Grounding energy, receptive energy, lifting tall to the crown of the head, pulling in, or rather just receiving a slow breath through the nose, letting it be um, as quiet as you can make it, as slow as you can make it to feel that strap expand along the low ribs, really sh showing you when we're sitting neutrally or standing neutrally, we are getting that full contraction of the diaphragm. A crazy study that looked at over a thousand athletes showed that 91% of athletes, these are fit people, athletes do not have a fully contracting and relaxing diaphragm, 91%. So what does that say about the general population? As you're just finding a couple slow breaths to end here, feel for the, the place along the strap that feels least dominant. Maybe it's the backs of the ribs, maybe it's the sides, maybe it's the front, somewhere in between. And just send a little bit more energy there. Direct bringing your attention there will help direct a little bit of a better flow of prana, of life force, chi, energy, 
vitality. Tongue to the roof of the mouth. One last breath here. 360, you're so spherical, bouncy, resilient, because the breath is on your side. And letting that go. Sweeping the arms up one last time. Don't let it flare the ribs, but let it lift the chest so that it's buoyant, it's uplifting, it's spring. And then touching the hands together, bringing them down along that midline, mirroring that very deep core part of you to let the thumbs settle at the chest. Namaste. Thank you all so much for practicing today.